to do a titration, we typically will build a titration kit. And what this consists of is everything that we need to make a titration and do one with. To start off with, you're going to need to get some distilled water. Uh, the reason you want it distilled is because water is has zero pH, well, it's, it's neutral in other words, with your pH, okay? So you need some distilled water. You're gonna need some isopropyl alcohol. It's important that it's isopropyl and not methyl alcohol. I like to get as pure as I can. This is about 91% isopropyl alcohol from the local grocery store. I'm going to need a jar or a jug that's sealable that can hold a liter of water because this is what I'm going to make and put my titration solution in so that I can reuse it multiple times. It's important that if you put it in a jug that may be looking like water that you mark it with a warning so that no one ever drinks out of it because this is poisonous what we're going to make. You're also going to need some containers to do your titration in. These are just simple little cups with milliliter markings on the side. If you hit your local grocery store, you can find some of these as well, usually in the kitchen aisle. Um, and then you're also going to need a container that has graduations clear up to a, mill, uh, a full liter because this is what will mix our titration solution in. You're going to need a scale that's accurate to 0.01 of a gram. This scale is, uh, is it's called a gem scale. They use it in jewelry to measure carrots and such like that, and it works quite well as well. But basically any scale, be it digital or a balanced scale, that can measure inaccuracy up to 0.01 of a gram. Okay? You're also going to need some syringes that have milliliter markings on them. You can go into a grocery store over to the pharmacy aisle and pick some of these up as well. Um, I have an assortment of syringes for doing several things, but these, these go up to 5 milliliters. And then I have these little bulbs that allow me to get extremely accurate with how many drops of titration solution I put in to see just where I'm at. You're also going to need a pH indicator. Um, this is phenolphthalein. It is a 1% solution of phenolphthalein, and it uh, is what will indicate pH when I get over about 8.5, 8-ish or so. It, it basically is going to tell us when we've neutralized all the acid, so we'll be using this. I have a little funnel that I like to have around so that I can put my, uh, make my solution up with. Um, I also have some safety gloves. It's important to wear safety, uh, safety garb when you're doing this because you are going to be playing with some chemicals and you're going to be playing with um, particularly the catalyst, which is either sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. You're also going to need some catalyst. In particular, this is potassium hydroxide. Um, whatever you plan on making your biodiesel with, be it sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, that needs to be the same chemical that you're going to use when you make up your titration solution. Uh, you can do the math to do the conversions, but it, you just get much better, much more reliable titrations if you use the same chemical. And that's basically what makes up a basic titration kit. Titration kits can be had on the internet from various sources. You can go into Walmart and build one up. Um, I offer one. What you see here is basically my titration kit minus the water and the alcohol. Uh, you go to Utah Biodiesel Supply is where we have ours. Um, expect to pay a little bit for shipping because uh, they have to send chemicals in them. Uh, phenolphthalein can also be ordered online various different places. Um, I carry it as well. You can get it at chemical stores. A good scale you can find on eBay or different things like that. Um, but if you're looking for just a simple, quick-to-use titration kit, uh, again, various people sell them for biodiesel, including myself. So that's what you need to do a basic titration.